The RMS Titanic was a British passenger liner which famously sunk on the 15th of April 1912 after colliding with an iceberg. The story of the sinking is one of tragedy, loss, sacrifice and survival and lives on as one of the most famous shipwrecks of all time. However, with over a hundred years of stories and adaptations, some myths, misconceptions and mistruths have arisen. Today, we'll be looking into titanic myths that you still believe. Unsinkable While we are all well aware of how sinkable the Titanic ended up being, was the ship ever called unsinkable in the first place? Well contrary to popular belief, the Titanic was never claimed to be 100% unsinkable. In fact, publications from the period only described the Titanic as practically unsinkable. Furthermore, her shipbuilder, Harland and Wolf, never said that the ship was unsinkable nor did they endorse any belief that she was. Advertisements used by the White Star Line, the Titanic's owner and operator, stated that the Titanic was designed to be unsinkable. This type of advertising was not uncommon for the time, with other companies such as Cunard and German steamers using similar language in their ads. The liner was designed with 16 main compartments, separated by bulkheads, which went from the bottom of the ship to 11 feet above the waterline. The Titanic was built so that it could stay afloat in the event that up to two compartments were flooded. This was a safety standard at the time, and still is today. When the Titanic struck the iceberg, six of her compartments were breached, causing immediate and irreversible damage. Compartments were not sealed watertight at the top, so slowly as the mighty ship's bow plunged beneath the Atlantic Ocean, water poured over each compartment into the next. It wasn't long until the ship crossed the point of no return, and soon sank after. The Titanic's design was standard for the time, and was one of the safest liners in 1912. It was only after the terrible tragedy that people started to make claims that the ship was meant to be unsinkable, shifting the tale from one of hard lessons learned to sheer incompetence. Lack of Binoculars On the late hours of April 14th, 1912, two men sit in her crow's nest, looking out into the dark ocean. They are acting as lookouts for the ship, making sure that there are no other ships or obstacles in the way. Suddenly, an iceberg appears, but even before the order is given, it's too late. Titanic experts will point out that the lack of binoculars could have contributed to the late reaction of the Titanic. However, is this true? Well, one thing to understand is that it was dark that night. Really dark. The Titanic sunk on a moonless night. This robbed the lookouts of their most vital means of detecting threats. On top of that, the ocean was calm, making detection of waves hitting objects impossible. Another factor is that the Titanic was travelling at 22 knots, an extremely fast speed for a cold night at sea. It's unlikely that the ship's lookouts could see much that night due to the amount of wind being blown into their face. Binoculars wouldn't have done much in the way of helping to spot something that was hard to see even on a bright night. Group this with a moonless and waveless night, and it was a disaster waiting to happen. SOS Titanic Soon after the Titanic impacted the iceberg, she began to use an onboard wireless telegraph to transmit distress signals to other ships nearby. Legend has it that the Titanic was the first ship to ever use the now commonly used acronym SOS. Is there any truth to this question? Well, no. The phrase SOS was first proposed in 1906 to be used as a distress call. In 1908, the call was finally ratified and has been commonly used since then. The first recorded use of the call was by the Cunard liner RMS Slavonia in 1909, when she ran aground. However, it is important to note that the term SOS was not common amongst British wireless operators. The Titanic initially sent out the much more familiar, but older, CQD call. Even though CQD was an older call, it was still understood as a distress call, and still in use, especially by British ships at the time. Soon after sending these messages out, one of the Titanic's wireless operators joked, Send SOS, it's a new call, and this may be your last chance to send it. After that point, the Titanic sent out both SOS and CQD calls, until the wireless room was wrecked by water damage. The Titanic Curse After the sinking of the ill-fated Titanic, 
rumours of a curse started to pop up. One of the first legends of a curse involved the ship's numbers being 390904, which when mirrored, looked like the words, No Pope. This is particularly interesting when you consider that the Titanic was built in Belfast, the capital of a very religiously divided Ireland. The ship's builders were accused of being particularly hostile to Catholics, and some even believed that the sinking was an intentional attack against Catholics. In reality, however, the Titanic was given the number 401, and her builders had actually hired some Catholics to work on their ships. Another common tale is that the Titanic was carrying a mummy from ancient Egypt, one that had caused a trail of devastation across Europe. The story goes that an American archaeologist bought the mummy, and was shocked when it didn't arrive, realising that it was aboard the RMS Titanic when it sank. This story is 100% false, and is completely made up. No mummy was ever aboard the Titanic at any stage of her construction or voyage. Still, the stories continue today, with some people linking the supposed Titanic curse with the sinking of the Titan in 2023. However, no such curse is believed to exist. Instead, not enough lifeboats and lacking safety standards from the time are thought to be the cause of the tragic sinking. Mystery Ship As the Titanic plunged beneath the waves, many ships, hearing the distress calls, raced towards her location. However, those aboard the Titanic were able to see a ship in the distance. What was this ship, and why didn't it go help the Titanic? From what we are able to gather, the ship that laid off the side of the stricken vessel was the SS Californian, a Leland Line steamship. The SS Californian actually saw the Titanic's distress rockets, and possibly even saw the ship itself on that cold April night. The Californian did not hear the Titanic's stress signals, nor did it react to the rockets after they were fired. However, there is a common legend that another ship lay dormant near where the Titanic sank. The Samson was a Norwegian sealer that was operating off the coast of Newfoundland for seals. The Samson was rumoured to be much closer to the Titanic than the Californian was, with some people even saying that the mysterious ship that the Titanic's passengers saw was in fact the Samson. Believers of the theory also claim that the Californian had instead spotted the Samson, not the Titanic. However, the truth is much more uninteresting. The Samson was built in 1885 and had no radio on board to respond to the Titanic's distress calls. Several accounts from Hendrik Nays, a crew member of the Samson, reported seeing lights in the distance. However, they did not react as they would be entering international waters. This places the Samson 504 miles off the coast of Newfoundland, already out of national waters, making the claim confusing and possibly misleading. Other crew members did not support the narrative that lights were spotted that night, and inconsistencies in Nay's story became apparent. If Nay's story is to be believed, there would have been in a 10 mile radius of the Titanic. Another problem with Nay's account is that the Samson didn't fit the description of the ship being seen by both passengers on the Titanic and the crew of the Californian. In any case, no ship came to assist the Titanic when it sank, and the first ship to arrive on scene was the Carpathia, almost 1.5 hours after the Titanic sank. <laughs>